I'm Peter Gottschalk, professor of religion at Wesleyan University. For the last two decades, I've been studying and researching Islamophobia and anti-Muslim sentiment. These are two different, but not entirely distinct phenomena. In fact, they're really quite closely related. Islamophobia, we can consider as a unjustified social anxiety about Islamic traditions. And anti-Muslim sentiment, we can think of as uh, exactly what the, the term sounds like, the prejudice and bias towards Muslims as Muslims. Now, I say that these things are different, but not distinct from one another, because over the centuries, indeed over a millennium, the two have inter, uh, interwoven with one another and influenced one another. At times, among non-Muslims, Islamic traditions and this abstract notion of Islam as this enemy has loomed very, very large. And so the notion of a religion being the enemy of Christendom and the uh, Islam as being an enemy of Europe or of the West has figured very prominently. At other times, the focus has really been on Muslims themselves. And sometimes, especially in the last couple of centuries, the emphasis has really been on Muslims as uh, a, a racial stereotype. Very often in the Western imagination, this is focused on being racially Arab, whatever that means, or as being behaviorally like Arab. Again, just a, a certain stereotype and certain characteristics that supposedly go with that. What we've seen most recently in the United States with the influx of South Asian Muslims uh, as immigrants and then new citizens, and then generations of South Asian Muslim Americans, is the expansion of the anti-Muslim stereotype to include South, Asian, uh, South Asians as well. This has uh, been a crippling problem for many uh, European and American societies for really uh, centuries in the case of the United States and for at least a millennium in terms of Europe. It hasn't been always prevalent. It has at times dissipated and not been very prevalent at all. But at various historical moments, it seems to reemerge to fit the context in which it occurs. And so that leaves a pr troubling problem of trying to understand how is there some sort of continuity over vast amounts of time, but at the same time, there is this discontinuity as well, because the sorts of anti-Muslim sentiment that we might see today in the United States, for instance, might be quite different than what we saw in the 1970s, for instance, during the Iranian uh, hostage crisis and during the Iranian revolution. And the same thing goes with Islamophobia. That also can change depending on the particular context. But nevertheless, this fear among Europeans and Americans who aren't Muslim towards Islam as some sort of abstract enemy and towards Muslims um, has emerged time and time again. In fact, if we look at the very earliest parts of the history of the United States as a republic, we find that people like Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, and Thomas Jefferson uh, referenced Muslims in fairly negative ways, or at least in ways in which we see that Muslims serve as some sort of foil for issues of toleration, for issues of inclusion. So for instance, Thomas Jefferson uh, poses the question, would we even allow a Muslim, and in that context, a Jew um, or a Hindu, to be a uh, uh, president, for instance, of the United States. That's a question that's posed at the formation of the American uh, Constitution, as well as uh, the formulation of basic laws for the um, state of Virginia, which he, uh, he represented. And so even then, we find that uh, Muslims are serving as foils for American values. 
because most of those people did not actually think Muslims lived in the United States at the time, although actually a great number of the uh, Africans who were enslaved and brought to the United States, as well as the rest of the Americas, in fact were of Muslim heritage. So what we find is a problem that emerges time and time again in different forms, but targets Muslims as a whole as being enemies of the West. We also, sadly, find that there are other forms of Islamophobia and anti-Muslim sentiment in other parts of the world. So for instance, in India right now, there's a great surge of Islamophobia and anti-Muslim sentiment in which Muslims are depicted very often by Hindu nationalists as being foreigners, even though the Muslims that they are depicting as foreigners uh, have been living in South Asia for, uh, for generations, centuries, more than a millennium in, in most cases. So my research att attempts to discover the ways in which this these sets of phenomena interact with one another and the ways in which they emerge in different places at different times and yet still seem to have these continuities. <laughs>